Hello guys, welcome back to another awesome coaster countdown. Today I'm going to be counting down my top 12 roller coasters at King's Dominion, which is a park located in Doswell, Virginia. I had the opportunity to visit this park this summer and let me tell you, I was very impressed with the park overall. There were some like ups and downs with it, but overall I thought I had a good time at King's Dominion. And today I will be ranking my top 12 roller coasters in the park. So without further ado, let's get started here with our number 12 pick, which is going to be the Great Pumpkin Coaster. Yes, I actually rode this coaster. I had to wait, like, I think one train. I had to ride with the kid or something like that, you know. If you, if you guys have been on a Great Pumpkin Coaster, then you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, basically, if you're over five feet tall, which I'm way over five feet tall, you have to ride with the child, which does kind of take away from it. It's harder to get the credit, but at the same time, I grabbed the credit, so I only wrote for the credit and it just left. So, next up, coming at number 11, is going to be Apple's Apple, which is the Wild Mouse, and honestly for a Wild Mouse, I think this is probably one of the strongest Wild Mouses I've done. I really enjoyed that first drop right before the switchback, so I definitely think that that's what separates Apple's Apple from most Wild Mouses I've done. And also, it's, overall, I thought it was a very fun ride. It wasn't like a top tier coaster or anything like that, but I overall enjoyed it. Since it's a Wild Mouse though, I can only rank it so high. So let's move on to our number 10 spot, which is going to be Woodstock Express. Which, it's just another, like, it's just another kitty wind coaster. This is my second Woodstock Express clone that I've done, the first one being Carowinds. And overall, I think the reason why I like it as much as the one at Carowinds is because I like the one at the Carowinds color scheme a bit more than King's Dominions. But overall, Woodstock Express is pretty much equal with King's Dominions, with Carowinds, my bad. So, uh, that's taking the number, that's taking the number 10 spot. So, taking the number 9 spot is might shock some people. This is Anaconda. Now, believe it or not, I actually kind of enjoyed this coaster. It wasn't like anything outstanding. This coaster definitely had its ups and downs. The main problem I had with Anaconda was the layout. I thought the layout really sucked. Like, it, was, it just looks like something that you'd have on Roller Coaster Tycoon. I got no, the layout was very funky. I was not impressed with the layout. Some of the profiling during like some of the turns, like towards the second half, were a little like sketchy. I wasn't too impressed with that. And it was rough. I think it's probably the roughest arrow I've done. I definitely got some headbanging, and there were a couple painful moments. Now, I didn't think the coaster was overall painful. I definitely have ridden worse roller coasters, and, it, and Anaconda is far from the worst roller coaster that I've done. But I definitely think of the arrow coasters that I've done, it is by far the weakest one. And also, one thing I was not a fan of is the pacing towards the second half. I thought the pacing was really just dull. So. Yeah, I do think it has some pros to it. I really love the appearance of the coaster. I like how it's over water, and the underwater tunnel was really cool. But overall, Anaconda, it, while it wasn't like one of my favorite coasters ever, I didn't find it to be as bad as everyone says it is. So that's taking the number nine spot. Taking the number eight spot is going to be Avalanche, which is the bobsled coaster in the park. And this is my first bobsled coaster that I rode. And I gotta be honest, I was a little let down by it, but at the same time, I really enjoyed it. I definitely thought the turns were kind of forceful. Uh, I did find it to be a little tame in some spots, but overall, I give it a thumbs up. I had a good time on it. It's definitely very unique because there aren't very, very many bobsled coasters out in operation, so it was a great game to ride one of the bobsled coasters that are currently in operation. I also know there's one in Six Flags over Texas and Arlington as well, which I haven't gotten over there yet. One day I will though, so stay tuned. Alright, taking the number 7 spot is going to be Backlot Stunt Coaster, which is a very well-themed roller coaster. And this is a coaster that, as a kid, I really wanted to experience myself because I really liked the whole theming and overall experience. And getting to ride one of the Backlot Stunt Coaster clones was kind of a surreal experience to me. Even though it, the, none of the effects were working or anything like that, I still had a good time on it. It definitely gave me Revenge of the Mummy vibes. If you've done Revenge of the Mummy, you know what I'm talking about. Like, like the layout kind of made me think of Revenge of the Mummy in a way. I don't know. One day I might do a coast fight between Backlot Snow Coaster and Revenge of the Mummy, so stay tuned. But uh, yeah, overall, like even though there was no audio or any effects or working, I still thought it was a very enjoyable ride. It definitely had some good forces, especially towards the beginning with that Helix. I actually grayed out, and they had some nice little airtime moments. I didn't find it to be rough, like maybe people were saying it was. Maybe just because I was just trying to enjoy the theming of the coaster, and it was overall. Was, it was overall a pleasant surprise, so I give Backlot Stunt Coaster a thumbs up. Taking the number six spot is going to 
upset some people. I know I have Rebel Yell at number six or Racer 75. For the love of gosh, I refuse it to call Racer 75 because that name is just dumb. But uh, yeah, Rebel Yell. Rebel Yell is just a classic name, you know? I overall, I still enjoyed Rebel Yell, but I will admit it definitely was underwhelmed with the coaster. I get it's a classic wooden coaster and you know, it can't be too extreme or anything, but, and I've heard from many people that it gives some fantastic airtime. But the airtime I just thought was, it was pretty good. That's what I thought it was. I didn't think it was like absolutely fantastic like everyone was saying. And I did twice, once on each side. I still felt like, interesting. It was definitely one of the smoothest um, classic wind coaches I've done. Not quite on the level of Wild One at Six Flags America in terms of smoothness, but overall I thought it was definitely a smooth coaster. There were just like there was like only one really rough spot, but honestly that didn't really bother me. I just knew I knew it was gonna be rough because of the profiling, it was kinda of odd. But overall, Rubble Yell is definitely a fun roller coaster and I highly recommend it if you ever go to King's Dominion. It really is a true classic. And we are at the top five now. Ticket number five is going to be Flight of Fear. This roller coaster surprised me. I have done one of these free rides spaghetti bowl coasters before. I did the Joker's Jinx at Six Flags America a couple years ago, so getting to ride Fly of Fear was pretty awesome. And honestly, even though that mid-course slows you down like crazy, I still preferred it over Joker's Jinx. Joker's Jinx, I kind of forgot my experience on, but this was very memorable. Like, that first half was absolutely intense, way more intense than I remembered from Joker's Jinx or anything like that. And I definitely thought it was a little shaky. I did, It definitely shook you around just a little bit, but it wasn't horrible, so I'll give it that. And also, I just I just love like the whole like indoor aspect. I definitely think indoor indoor coasters are here to stay. I think they're awesome. It's not my favorite indoor coaster I've done. That goes to Revenge of the Mummy at Universal Studios. But still, this coaster is awesome. This is what I wish rock and roller coaster were like. Where it was just intense and all. But I get rock and roller coasters at Disney World, so I get it can't be too intense because it's more for the families. But at the same time, I don't know. I just I enjoyed Fly Fear more than Rock and Roller. Did I? Uh, I don't know. I need to re rethink that. But uh, overall, Fly Fear was a very solid roller coaster. And I'm glad that I got to ride it at King's Dominion. And if I ever go to King's Island, I'll be looking forward to ride the other version at King's Island. All right, taking the number four spot was a, is a very big surprise. This is Grizzly, which honestly. Even though I thought it had some of the most brutal bumpiness I've ever had on a roller coaster, for some reason I just thought it added to the whole experience because it like the name is very fitting with the roller coaster. It makes you feel like you know it's just the fact that it was in the woods definitely added to the experience in my opinion. And I just had a good time on the Grizzly, and yes, I scored a night ride, front row night ride on the Grizzly, and that was a very memorable experience, even though. I was stable like crazy, like, I got, so like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, but, uh, yeah, Grizzly, overall, is pretty awesome, and it had, that tunnel section, my gosh, that was insane, like, you got some really good airtime, and it was, like, just really bumpy, which, I don't know, it just added to the coaster, it's like one of those rides where the bumpiness adds to it, there were some parts that was, there's one part that I just did not like at all, I thought it was awful, but there was this one jolt, like, there was this one, like, jerky moment, that might be the worst moment I've ever, like, worst jerky moment I've ever experienced on a coaster. Like, you're kind of going through this one turn, and I think it was the profiling, but I was just like, boom, it was like that. It, it was just like, that should be illegal. But, uh, yeah, Grizzly, it was an awesome wind coaster, and I definitely think it is definitely a pretty stand-up classic wind coaster. It definitely gives me, like, the impression of Cheetah at Wild Adventures. Very rough ride, but still fun. So, we are at the top three now. These next three coasters, I think, were really awesome. Taking the number third spot is going to Dominator, which is the park's B&M Floyd's coaster. And let me tell you, this roller coaster is awesome. Like, I was genuinely surprised by portions of the coaster. It was much more intense than I expected. I mean, I've done Kraken a lot because Kraken's at my home park. So, yeah. And I did find there to be a rattle to it. I definitely got some head banging, especially towards the second half. But it didn't really bother me too much because, again, I'm used to Kraken, and you guys know that Kraken is one of my favorite roller coasters. So, yeah, but yeah, the, so Dominator, like, honestly, I, I really enjoyed it, and I really liked all the inversions, especially even though they were rough. 
interlock and corkscrews, it definitely gave me Kuma vibes. Like they were just very ferocious and overall I enjoyed those. Again, it can't be on the level of Kuma. Kuma is just too good. That is, Kuma is just godly. But uh, Dominator, I thought the corks was really good. And then that vertical loop, my gosh, dude, that loop is just gargantuan. Like, again, like Kraken, I, I, I ride that coaster all the time. And, and I think that vertical loop is really big too. But then looking at Dominator, I'm like, yeah, that was just my impression when I saw Dominator's loop. Like it was simply big. I also do find it weird that the color scheme on Dominator's loop is different compared to the rest of the ride. I know it's a tribute to Geauga Lake because that used to be a Geauga Lake back in the day. But overall, Dominator, well, I didn't find it to be as good as Kraken. I still thought it was a great roller coaster. Definitely loved that coaster and it was one of my favorites at the park. So, we are now at the top two. Before I get into my number two spot, these next two are two of my all-time favorite roller coasters. I absolutely love these two so much. Like, I could not believe how good they were when I got each, like, both coasters. But taking the number two spot is going to be Twisted Timbers, which is the park's RMC hybrid roller coaster. This is my first hybrid coaster that I wrote from RMC. It's the only hybrid that I've done from RMC. So if this is, a, if this is like, my number five overall, then gosh, I need to go on some more RMC hybrid coasters because I think those the place in my top spots. Look at you, RMC Wazzy 2020. You already, it was right 2020, boys. <laughs> but getting back to Twisted Timbers, overall, this coaster, I just think it's a full package ride. Like, first off, that the drop, like, like that roll drop, the way, like, you know, how the drop is, I don't know, like, it's just something, like, truly awesome that you need to experience for yourself to truly understand. But that inversion drop, I don't even know how to call it, a roll drop, I don't know. That part just caught me off guard each time. I got two rides in it, once in the back during a day during the daytime, and then once in the front during the nighttime where I had a lot of room in my restraint. So I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that front row ride. That airtime on Twisted Timbers was pretty epic. Especially those like back-to-back -back hills and then towards the back half of the ride, the airtime got really strong. Especially that trick track double up, which was pretty legendary. I know it, I heard it's not as good as Storm Chasers. So like if I ever get to Kentucky Kingdom and ride Storm Chaser, then my gosh, I just couldn't imagine how violent that would be. But uh, Twisted Timber is also, I call this the smoothest roller coaster I've ever done. I think it was insanely smooth for what it was. And just overall, I found it to be a very incredible roller coaster. Definitely a full package ride. It wasn't the most intense G-Force wise, but I'd say it probably had the best airtime in all of King's Dominion. And some of the best airtime period. So, we have made it to the number one spot, and if you haven't guessed it already, you know this coaster's been number one overall as well. It's Intimidator 305. My gosh, I could just like, man, I could just go on all day on how good this roller coaster is. Legit, like, I was like, think, I, this, was, this was not even the coaster that I was like most anticipating this summer. That was Lightning Rod. And I was so surprised when I thought Intimidator 305 beat Lightning Rod for me. Like, I was surprised. But this coaster, man, this thing is insane. When you go up that lift hill, it is like, you have a really fast lift hill. It's, it's one of those cable lift hills. If, if, if you've done Skyrush, you know what I'm talking about. Even though this lift hill is not as fast as Skyrush's lift. But then you get to the top, and then going down that drop, man, that was insane. And then, uh, of course, after that drop, you have that first turn, which is pretty legendary because that's the part where everyone grays out especially me, I got three rods on it. The first time, I definitely grayed out. The second time, it was a front row ride. I didn't gray out as much. I grayed out a little, but it was kind of a little more fury, but then I wrote, the third time I wrote it, I was blacked out, like that was insane. And then afterwards, it even ended from there, like you kept going through these rapid fire transitions that were just like, it was just like very hard. It was like, man, it was awesome. And if, if I haven't done Maverick yet, then my gosh, I would love to see how good Maverick is. But uh, yeah, this coaster, I just love Interior 305 so much. I know some people do prefer it over Steel Vengeance, which, which sounds very interesting. I know Micah from Coaster Frenzy is a fanboy of this roller coaster, and he was hyping it up for me too, and he's not wrong. None of these people are wrong about Interior 305. This roller coaster, is incredible. Like I could not believe what I just witnessed when I got into Air 305 for my first ride. And this is gonna be a very hard coaster to beat in my book. 
it is without a doubt not only my favorite roller coaster at King's Dominion, but my favorite coaster, period. So that is going to end this coaster countdown. I want to know in the comments below, what are your favorites at King's Dominion if you've ever been before? Also, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content in the future. Also, don't forget to check out Theme Park Guide Productions on Instagram for more updates and content. I'll see you guys next time, and have a theme-tacular day.